Bonjour, hi. Welcome to the Nadine's show where we talk about social issues of our race and gender. Please comment, share and like. Your feedback will be mostly appreciated. Come and join our team where we have great discussions. Welcome to the Nadine's show. From Montreal and today is May, it's Saturday, May the 8th, 2020. So I'm just going to make sure that everyone is on. Just finish our first part. Okay. Okay. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. Melka, where are you? I'm ready. Yeah, it works. Yeah. We're waiting for everyone. Yeah. I think this is a good time for the second part will be about Melka. Yeah. It's cheer, guys. You have to cheer. We have to share the live. Yeah, we have to share to let everyone know that you guys are back. Please share. Share the live. Let me share. Please share. Let me live. share. Let me share. This is the second segment. And it will be... Okay, let's share, everyone. Please share. Okay. I'm sharing, everyone. Okay. Okay. We have got the second part. We only get one hour per segment. Everyone's sharing. Okay. Yeah, so we're back. We're just waiting for everyone to get on. Yeah, because it's going to take some time for everyone to get back on. Yeah, to get back on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi, Skilla. I can see, I can see Dance on Skilla. How are you doing, sir? I'm Dance on Skilla. Yeah. I see Teresa. No, I see um, Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. We're still waiting. Please share, everyone. Please share. I'm home. Monica is here, too. Please share live. Please share. Malik. Yeah, please share. Please share, everyone. Jean Clark is here. Hi, Jean. Yeah, please share the second part. Yeah, this is our second part. The first part that we had, we talked about what happened in St. Vincent's. That was the discussion. So now, tonight, because you know, on our segment, our platform, we talk about abusive relationship, and we talk about um, how people are suffering in silence, and because of that, they, they cannot speak, they're scared to speak, or they do not know where to go, although sometimes help is there, but at the same time, they have that fear. So my platform is where you can come along and speak. Your mind, there's no discrimination against you, no judgment at all, because we are not professionals to give you, to make any judgment call. But however, we're here to have a, a conversation with you, a discussion, you know, let you feel that you have someone you could talk to. So I think the one is coming up. How are you feeling, Malka? How are you feeling? You're, you're feeling good? I'm okay. You're feeling good? Yes. Okay, because... We're the yeah. guests tonight, so we just want to make sure that you're feeling great. Share, everyone. Please share. Share the live. Yeah, please share. Yep. All ready? You guys are ready? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. okay. You ready? I said to go. Okay, okay, hi, yes. Hi, yes. So, Micah was sharing her life experience with us. This is real life experience. She's telling us. 
So please be respectful to her. Please don't write no judgment about her mistakes that she might say she made in life. It's very hurtful sometimes. And, you know, we're here with a hope and harm for her, okay? Please, guys, on the comment section, please. Have a heart tonight, okay? Be positive, and let's just use nice words right now, okay? Thank you. So, Malka, yeah. So, yes. So, as I was saying before, we were cut off. My my mother was very poor, yes. and it didn't matter how poor she was, mm -hmm. she always made us look pretty. Stocking socks, hair bow, clips. Mm -hmm. We were always stand out as two girls that my mother had of her first two kids. Mm -hmm. Then I, I, I don't even know how it all started. How I end up start getting abused from a tender age of a child. Like I remember the first set of punishment that I got and I I start getting emotional. The first set of abuse I start getting is my grandmother would have put me on greater to kneel down, you know, greater. Oh, oh my goodness. Like what you grew wow. coconut with. And she will tie me with my hair ribbon at my chair foot, at the chair foot in the kitchen or whatever. What? Sometimes when she put me on the grater, she will put big stones in my hands. Oh, God. And those are the steps I start oh, going God. through at a young tender age. And when I say tender age, all coming up seven, eight. What? I was like, at that age, what could I have done at those age to receive such what? abuse? But the abuse didn't end there. My grandmother now, we journey from where we were living at the first home where we were living in a two bedroom house with how much of us? And then they were able to build a two bedroom yes. house. Yes. Right. And when I get there to live, the abuse starts more. I remember, even if I tell the truth, or a lie, I still going to get abused. Wow. So may as well you tell the lie and done because if you tell the truth, licks, you ain't tell the truth still licks. I was not living far from Belair School and I have to reach home by five past three. And after reaching home at five past three, I will tidy up myself and I will journey to the roadside where they will send me to sell pudding, popsicle, fudge, whatever. Because that was their livelihood. And the abuse was so much that I start literally running away from them. Oh. Running away from them. Oh my God. Back then they say, they used to say that I run a home for like take man, take boys. Yeah. But that was not the case. That was not the case. I used to run away from home because I was a boy. Wow, you're trying to escape. Yes, and my I used to get licks with any and everything. Broom, stick, wet clothes, rubber, oh my God. anything. I used to get licks. No. I'm, not, I'm not interrupting. There were no one to, to, on your behalf, to say don't. This is too much for a child to be going through. No one. No one? Right. The neighbors didn't intervene. Mm -hmm. Family wow. didn't intervene. Wow. wow. No one. didn't intervene. No one. Your school teachers didn't. No. As I go, as I go along, you will find okay. out what happened. Okay. Right? Okay. So we're gonna keep quiet. Then, then we're gonna keep quiet. Then when I would go to the road to sell, they will count like everything. When it's ten dollars popsicle, whatever, whatever. So you know, I have to carry home the correct money and stuff, which I would have. Mm -hmm. And then there was this particular man. Since I've known this man, I never knew him as a child working. Every time he comes, he will come with paper money, right? Mm -hmm. So when I have to change money, I have to give him back his change. And every time I try to give him back his change, he will try to like touch my hands, mm -hmm. like touch. Knowing who I am, 
I'm very outspoken. So when you do that, I'm going to pull around to it. Where touching me for? You know? Where are touching me for? And then it keep going on repeatedly, repeatedly. So there are times when my grandmother will call me to go to sell and I will put up resistance from selling. And she will beat me because I know this man, what he's doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And I would have speak about what he was doing me as a child. Mm -hmm. So one day now, I went away from home. And I know when I get back, I know the abuse I would have got. So I decide to await my uncles at the junction. So I will go home with them. So they will come like they will save me from oh, okay. the <laughs> But on waiting now for my uncles, they wasn't coming and I was getting tired. Yeah. Okay. The same guy yeah. came and he saw me and he was like, Wait, when here, you're running from home? Come and follow me home. So I said, No, I ain't running from home and I don't want you to follow me home. So he insists he must follow me home, but I never went with him. Mm -hmm. Where I'm living here right now, there was a shortcut. So I saw him went up through the shortcut to go. Oh. Mm -hmm. So while I was at the junction waiting and my uncle was, wasn't coming, I decided to walk along. I'm walking along now. That time I had long hair. My hair was in one and mm -hmm. That's how my parents used to tap my hair. Put it in one and black oh, cool. and long. Mm -hmm. And when I reached in the corner, I just saw when somebody jumped down the bank in all black. That's all I saw. Mm -hmm. so after I saw that, now I draw back. And after I draw back, I recognized who the person oh. was. Was the same guy that saw me oh, there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he was like, give me a kiss now. So I say, give you a kiss? Huh? I'm not in a relationship with you. How could I give you a kiss? over you. Right? I was turned oh, okay. So I was like, how could I give you a kiss? Uh-huh. So he insists I must kiss him. And I decide I'm not going to kiss him. Uh -huh. Anyway, I got angry and I push him aside and I'm trying to bend the corner to head home i'm trying to bend the corner now i receive one box in my face what what one box in my face after i received the box in my face a ball out and i say oh god uh -huh. so i sound the alarm because the bank where he dropped down is his auntie's living there so i sound the alarm so that someone will hear yeah. my cry that yeah. night and after when i scream out and bawling oh god he quickly now Grab me from my neck, hold on from my hair, right? And he boxed me oh. again. All I can remember, I just felt when I was lifted up in the air and then I was thrown over a bank. Oh. When I caught myself, it was like four in the morning. I caught myself in a dashing swamp. You know what is a dashing swamp? Yeah. Where yeah. you just get dashing, where we get the color of bush. You know, that swampy area where it does get like the Kalalu bush. Like Kalalu yeah, to poke. Yeah, Kalalu. yeah. So it was like a garden, like an yeah. area. Yes, yes, yes. But it's swampy. Okay, okay. Sweaty and yes, swampy. yes. So when I caught myself, wow. it was morning, like after four or five in the morning. And when I tried to get up, I could not have walked Ooh. properly. So then I fight, came up the bank. I fight came up the bank and I was fighting going home. On reaching home at my grandmother's yeah. gate, you know that man was there living what? with me, right? Because apparently he came over there, so he was watching. So he maybe thought that I had oh, died. Okay. So when he tried to att attack me a second time, what? the dogs oh. were barking and they started going at his attack. Okay. So I was able to run okay. home. Okay. On running home that morning. I knocking at the door and knocking my granny and she was like, well, then I said, meet you. And my grandmother came out and the same sneakers that I was wearing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That woman almost killed me. What? It's out finding out the truth of what happened. Knowing that I came home all wet, all mm -hmm. messed yeah. up, you know? She beat me. When I tell you, licks. I thought I would not have made it. Licks. After she, after she finished abusing me, she then took me and locked me into a bedroom like a prison. Locked me in the bedroom like a prison. And 
she came in the afternoon to take me out to bed, but I didn't shower. So I see she turned her back now, so I run out the house and I run to a neighbor, which is the same guy who raped me, auntie. Oh, okay. So I said to her, I yeah. said, Luenda, you know, Wayne raped me last night. Yeah. She said, you lied. I said, yes. Wayne raped me last night. She said, you lie. I said, yes. So I said, if you don't believe, let me carry you inside and let me show you. That time I didn't bathe. Even if my granny tell me to tidy up, I didn't touch yeah. there. So you see, all the dry oh, blood and everything God. was there. I did not touch myself. No. And the Luanda called the cops, the police, and the police came. And it's not until my parents saw the police going with me. That is when they came down to find out what was oh, happening. My. I said nothing to my parents. And the reason why I said nothing about to my parents is because of the abuse. I would have suffered over the years mm. from my parents. Oh, it, so I said nothing. Right? And my life did not end there. It, it did not end there. But eventually the guy was on the run. He was locked oh. up. He went to prison. He saw Okay, it. okay. He went to prison. He oh. But I must truly say that after growing this big and getting a big woman, I must truly say that he apologized. He asked me not to be fearful of him. And he apologized for what he had done me when I was a child. But you know, you still yeah, can yeah. trust everyone. Yeah. Wow. So, after going through that stage of my life where I used to run away from home and stuff like that, when I was 18, I got pregnant. And after getting pregnant at the age of 18, I was pregnant at 18. My big sister was pregnant at 19. So the both of us were pregnant. Okay. And when I told my mommy who I had sex with, mm -hmm. she went and called the gentleman. And this gentleman said to my mommy, he never had sex with me. He never had a relationship with me. And he don't know what I'm talking about. So he actually disowned my son. After this man disowned my son, you know what my mother did? My mother put me on the street that was home. What? I was home. My mother put me on the street at the age of 18. Pregnant. I was pregnant. I was homeless. Where my mommy was living, there was a house that was being constructed. Mm -hmm. Right? I used to sleep under the downstairs on plywood. What? And I would journey to the river at mornings. I would bathe at the river, scrub my teeth at the river. Wash my clothes, hang them on river stone, and cook a butter pan. My God! And after now, my baby start, my baby start growing and getting older in months. I start doing prostitution. I start doing prostitution. Oh I start stealing, as in, I start stealing baby clothes, wipes, pampers, pins, whatever necessary to nineties. The things that I wanted yeah. most for my bag, I start stealing wow. these stuff. So I could pack my wow. bag for the hospital. For me. Wow. Mm. I eventually took my child father to the family court. And even he wanted to put on a test and the test result came out. He is the oh. father. He still never mind my son to today. He's oh my goodness. My goodness. My goodness. <laughs> So didn't your mother, didn't your parents see that he was a liar then? Once the paternity test came back to say he was the father. Yes. Didn't they feel, didn't they feel horrible? Are yes. they still alive? Right. Yes, my, my mom's still alive, but for the past 43 of my life. Sorry, guys. Sometimes they ask God what I did, how yeah. sorry, or what have I done, yeah. how I'm doing for all that time in my life, I was looking for love and I'm not getting yeah. it. So I reach at a stage in my life where I cut yeah. off. So because the Bible speaks of something off and you cut yeah. it. So I no longer look for love from yeah. her. So it's like my source of strength is my prayers as a prayer warrior. Mm -hmm. These two persons who just ask me not to give up and keep going yeah. on. And that is how I build strength. Okay, that's good. To where you I gotta be strong. Yes, that's good. Yes, that's yes, yes, yes. Right. yes. And when I, I'm very emotional right now. I'm so sorry to know that 
you have to go through all of this and you have to come out tonight to speak. I'm so sorry. Hopefully I did not put you in a position. No, it's okay. I'm so it's okay. The reason why it is okay because I'm there are hidden secrets. Yes. There are hidden secrets inside that sometimes you don't know who to speak yeah. to. But sometimes you just have to let it That's all true. out. Oh, can't let it bubble up because, because it eats that way it eats away at your inner being it really does just have to my, my Kai, and where, when you had a baby where were you i was homeless i was homeless i know i was homeless. no one could help you i was homeless so when you went to the hospital and you had that baby, you came back on the street to live? When I had the, after I had the baby at the hospital uh -huh. where my where I was living before from a child at the boathouse at Fountain. It had no light, no water. Some of the windows were already broken out and the house was already rotten. Mm -hmm. So what I did, I occupied one of the bedrooms okay. and used that as a way for me and the baby and I would go to the river. Mm -hmm wash jug water from the pipe yeah. whatever and use that room to live so that yeah. i could have some comfort yeah. Yeah. for me and my mm -hmm. but i love my son no, I love of, my course. Son. of course it's your first child yes, yes. when I, I love my, and i one of the things i did i never lied yeah. to him i don't like to any of my kids i always tell them where yeah. i came from mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. then when I give you the part of the rape and my pregnancy, yes. I was living also when I was a child next to a police guy. Mm -hmm. And last year was the first I broke my silence oh. on this one. And this is the second time I'm going to speak about it. I was living next to a police and my grandmother used to wash and starch his uniform and she used to cook for him. And my granny will send me to take the food or uh, his clothes, whatever. And one time I go and I will go knock the kids' bedroom because he was, he didn't have some home that has been built, it will have a front porch and a back. Okay. So he was occupying the Okay. Back. So one day when I went to take his food and his clothes, he held on to my hands and he pulled me into his room. And he started like flirting at me, carrying on at me, but I'm very plain minded I'm a fighter. Mm -hmm. So if you defend, if you come at me, I will defend. I will fight to defend. Mm -hmm. Right? And he start molesting me. And he will threaten me not to say anything. If I say anything, yes, police will happen and whatever. So he's threatening me. Oh, what are you? So I know what happened. What age? I was young. What age? Even before, even before young or like after I was raped, all them times were like 14, 15 going up there. Okay. I was young, pretty young. I wouldn't remember exactly okay. the year or uh, whatever, but and I was so often said to my granny, I am not going. Yeah. So every time he wants to molest me now, he will call my granny on the phone and tell, send me kid for collect the money, what you do for me, or send me oh, kid no. for this, uh, he wants to bless okay. me. Okay. So even if I would have put up resistance not to do yes. my granny still will beat me and send me because I know when I go, he's going to yeah. be And I kept that silent until I received a phone call from this gentleman one day. And he was said to me, Nikki, this is XYZ. Yeah. So I said, Who names so? I said, Who names so? He said, What do you mean who names so? You forget whoever live next to Tanti Maida. I said, oh, okay. He said that he is a bay leaf and he has a letter for me of something that I had took out and higher purchase and I was not able to pay for it because I was going through. Mm -hmm. So he came at my business place before I lost my business. Mm -hmm. And when he came, he was like, um, it tastes nice. It still tastes nice. I can't even taste when you were younger. How could you abused me when i was a I'm child i'm going to ask you oh my goodness 
now I am for well I'm 43 now but it happened that I am 42 to, I was about 42 or 41 mm -hmm. at that around that age how could you approach me in such manner right and he was like oh you still taste sweet like when you be younger so I said to him you know what get to F out mm -hmm. of my yeah. business get out get out mm -hmm. you know what that man did me that man went back to the higher porches business place uh -huh. and give the impression as if i didn't want to make a settlement of the bill or wow. whatever then my name ended up in court. wow my name ended up at court wow. house then i never got summons to go to court but my hearing had already called three oh, times wow. and i never knew until god placed my police brother at the court at the right yeah. time <laughs> And he told me that there was a bench warrant out for me what? to be locked up. And that's how my brother paid the yeah. fee for me. Because it's like, because of what yeah. happened, and I lash out at him, he went back and make it look like wow. I am the bad person. When I am the victim, wow. and he is the bad one, wow. right? But with all that, my life didn't you know, I would call his name. Right. I would call him out. Too. I would call him out. I'm not afraid to call him out. Because his name is Elvis James. I'm not afraid to call him because I'm a plain yep. person. His name is Elvis James. He's an ex-police and he's from the That's it. Right? I'm not afraid to call it's him out because file. I'm speaking to yeah. you. And who knows yes. what <laughs> other young girls he had done this to um, in the past. Um, who can, knows? No. Can you make a report about this? Because I know some countries... Um, statutory rape, you know, they have some. There's power. none, there's <laughs> none. Yeah, there's no law that you, you you have to let certain years because it's not robbery, this is rape. So, at least you have a case. Can you go and report it now? Because it's a it's a it's like what I the way how I see it. Because after what uh -huh. happened, I write him a message. As lo long true messenger on Facebook, I found him and I sent him a mm -hmm. message. And I said, I pray and hope that your wife see this message yeah. as well. Oh. And I hope so that you as no oh, good. Did you oh. paste it on his page or you sent it a private messenger? I sent I sent a private message to his inbox. Oh. oh. You can put it on and his I page. said to him, I hope your wife <laughs> see this message. I sent it in to his inbox. Okay. She will get this recording that we're doing it because I'm gonna post it up. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem because I know I'm telling the truth. That's it. And right? the truth will set you free, girl. Set yes. Free. So I have yes. permission. And I have permission to post it. You're giving me permission to post the yes. video. Yes. yes. Yes, you can post it. Okay, yes. thank you. And after having my son went through all that then i met my daughter's father after getting pregnant for my daughter's father mm -hmm. he then turned his back on me he then turned his back on me so i had to start what i went through with my first son all over again mm -hmm. stealing prostituting mm -hmm. I have to do what I have to do to pack her bag as well for the hospital. Mm -hmm. After I took ill, actually I went to put in a hairstyle to go to, I think it was a wedding or somewhere, mm -hmm. and like the hair was too tight, and I start feeling oh. pain. And then I end up at the hospital, so the hair bring on tantrum. Oh. Oh. Okay. And my daughter was born. Oh. And then I came home, and if I came home from the hospital, like today, he came and he said he heard that I have the baby, and he came to see the baby, because apparently he disowned my baby. So he came and he saw the baby. After he saw the baby, well, I tell you, I was living in the board house, the yeah. board house. Mm -hmm. He eventually came, and he was staying there with me, with the oh. baby. And that's when, no family stepped mm -hmm. in oh no good money go shack up they would deal with that child and the man find somebody for you and that's when they stepped in when i have the second okay. child 
And where I was, it was suitable to raise a child for okay. a child. Mm -hmm. So they all stepped in and I was able to find somewhere. No. Well, when I got pregnant, after when I, I have my mm -hmm. son, after I had my son and I was homeless and I told you I had to go to the boat yeah. house there. Yes. My mommy had built a house some years ago and she had left and went to Canada mm -hmm. then. And the guy who she had built the house with still was living there. So I would have gone there to and occupy a space. Okay. And my son was, he wasn't even here yet. And I'm telling you no lie, I would have dressed and I would have go out. I would have left him home. But when I say left him home, they make it look like if I used to leave him in a house, he mm -hmm. alone and mm -hmm. gone. So there were other occupants in the house who would have occupied rooms. Oh, okay. And I would have gone away from you because I had to go and make my living. I had to get yeah. money. I had to do what I had to mm -hmm, do mm -hmm. to my myself. I, I'm not ashamed to say I had yeah. to do what I mm -hmm. to my mm -hmm. myself. And one morning, I was home and I heard someone calling me. When I look outside, it was my grandmother and a big man of the police force. Oh. And she was like, oh, pack, pack Mikkel's stuff, pack his stuff, give me him, give me him. You just go where I leave him and whatever. Leave him in a, I never left him in a house here alone. Mm -hmm. There were persons in the house with him. Right, but the way how they sung it out, as if he alone in the whole house and I gone. Mm -hmm. But little did they know I was going to make a living for mm -hmm. him. I was going yeah. to fight to get milk. Yeah. I was going to fight to get yeah. campers. I was going to fight to get baby food and the necessary things he need mm -hmm. as a baby. And they took him from Ooh. me. He was one year and my grandmother took him mm -hmm. from me. And even my grandmother took him from mm -hmm. me. I still had to provide for my son. Mm -hmm. I will fight. I will do everything in my power. To make sure that my son was fed. Mm. And today, one of the things I respect him about, sometimes he's a bit rude at times, because we all does as children yeah. growing up. Mm -hmm. But one thing I respect about him is that he knew my life story. Mm -hmm. He knew where I started from with yeah. him. There were times when we will have heated arguments and he will use back certain things at me and even bring hurt and pain but it's still all okay because remember we as we as women when we were young and our parents say things to me, we all lash out yeah, parents yeah well. say things we don't really mean so it's all yeah. okay because now as a parent you could see what your parents mm -hmm, went through mm -hmm. so it's all okay right one of the things that, that i would have faced with over the years is that like Vincent and know your past and let me say I and you have an argument just a disagreement you will hear how a whole be you will never better mm -hmm. because words because your tongue is a weapon a powerful yeah, weapon yeah. Mm -hmm. oh man this one you pick me the man wrong daddy the, 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 the wounds so instead of some people try to speak life into you they add more yeah. to what is mm -hmm. there. So that's why over the years, I separate myself mm -hmm. from persons because I don't know who to trust. Yes, that's understood. Yes. I don't know. Who yes. To. Even to the point when Nadia reached out to me and she spoke to me and told me, who gave her my contact, whatever. I now contacted Miss Victory. Miss Victory is sure. Miss Victoria show because I do not trust people. Send me kill it's okay. So this is how now I felt a bit of release that at least someone is gonna listen to my story. Yeah. Someone is gonna see my pain. Someone gonna understand what I've been through and the reason why I had to go through what I went. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. Then eventually my daughter's father he married me he married me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and everything turned for the worst oh. oh oh wow 
is like you're looking for love from your family, from your mother, from your father, your siblings, and you're not getting the love you want. So you figure now holding on to, to a man or holding on to something. It might bring a little, you know, ease to your life. But all the time, you never know what you're getting into until you get into wow. And that's what a lot of people realize. Because sometimes when I speak to people, they will ask me, but how you end up with three children, father, who ain't supporting your kids? How would I have known mm. if I get involved with Tom, Dick, or Harry? They're going to treat me this way. How, how would, would I know? have known? We don't know the future. Because we all have to, we have to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Right? So this guy decided to hold my hand in marriage. I guess he see the qualities in me. And he decided to marry me. And we were married. This year, September, would be 19 years. Okay. That's beautiful. I would have been married. This year would nineteen mm -hmm. years. I would have been married to my daughter's yeah. father. You, uh, oh no, you would have been. You said past. Yes, past nineteen. Years. We not we divorced or we are divorced oh, okay. already. This year, because I said wonderful, and then when you said would have been, I'm like, are you? Yes, okay, so sorry to know yes, that you guys are uh, separated. I'm so sorry. Yes. And, yes. mm -hmm. and everything turned for the worse in the marriage. Sorry, he yeah. start, he abused me mentally, physically, verbally. He cheated on me. He brought women into my Ooh. home. He did me so many things. I would have journeyed to the police station, <laughs> reports after report, reports after report. But because he is the law. Mm -hmm. You know they're not gonna no, go against. No, him. not at all. So it's like the things that he keep doing me repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. Mm -hmm. I sit down and I say, you know what? I cannot take this anymore. Somebody got to feel what I am going through. I cannot take it. Mm -hmm. And I sat down and I plan a way out. Mm -hmm. And I dress in camouflage, like police mm -hmm. clothes. And I went to the courthouse where my husband moved. Mm -hmm. And I let off every steam that I had. I fight that man. In the nothing anybody said. That. Yes, nothing anybody said that day. Yes. Nothing anybody said that day could have cooled what I was going through. I had to defend myself at any means and any force. So at that day, I didn't care anything. I didn't care anything. Mm -hmm. After lawyers came, they took me to the Marian house. They counseled me and whatever. And then I still was so hot. I went home and I gathered all my husband clothes mm -hmm. and I burnt everything. I burnt everything. Mm -hmm. I left him with just his clothes on his back. I burnt everything. And I remember he called me and he said, um, I come in for me clothes. I said, what clothes? Mm -hmm. And he said, the clothes were the home. I said, I don't burn them because it's I buy them. So I burn them. Right? Mm -hmm. Even if I would have said that to him, I thought he would have just lowered it. Mm -hmm. One day now I was at work and a police lady who knows me where we grew up together in the same community. She called me on the phone and she asked where I was. So I said I was at work. She said, she want to see me come here. She outside, come here. So I quickly left the client and I headed outside. Mm -hmm. Betrayal is very close. Oh, wow. The closest person to you in your life mm -hmm. will take yeah. you on yeah. betrayal. Mm -hmm. You know, when I reached down that steps... And I went to meet that young lady. I walked straight into the hands of the police. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She set yeah. me up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she set me up. She set me up. And after she set me up, they came home to bring him to get his clothes. He noticed there were no clothes. And they saw the big fireside. <laughs> so they eventually now tape around my home. Police line do not cross. 
say becomes a crime <laughs> <laughs> wow. Then they took me to the police station. They took me back to Kingston. And when I reached like close to my job, he asked them, You are not leaving her? You're not leaving her? So they said, No, they cannot leave me because the police gave them instructions to go mm. out. And because what they saw, they would have to take me to the station, to the person in charge, so the person will say what and what. Mm -hmm. Never to know in a lot they were going to mm -hmm. come people. Mm -hmm. For my rights, they locked me up. And even they locked me up, one thing I could tell you, my husband never leave my side. Every single night I was locked up at that station, he stayed at that police station. What? Every night I slept at that police station, mm. he stayed at that police station. He did not go home. He, he was watching you. He was station. watching you. Yes. Wow. Yes, he stayed all there of, at that police station. How long did he stay there for? I stayed, I stayed it was like three, three to four. No, I think it was like three to four wow. days. Wow. Before I was charged. And then what they did me that day, they wait until the court was finished to charge me. So then I could not yes. go to court and then they put me downstairs in the big yeah. cell. Wow. And someone who know me personally, mm -hmm. Mrs. McMaster, I just want to thank her still today. She would have know what I was going through, and she was on my side. So she bailed okay. me. Okay, okay. She bailed me and told me to come back the next okay. morning. Okay. All the time okay. to go to okay. Just as instructed. So who was she? Who was and Mrs. McMaster? Who was she? She's, she's a big, she was a big woman in the police. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so she bailed okay. me. Okay. Right. Okay. And I went to court the next day, and then they took the matter to the family court because it was a family okay. matter. Mm -hmm. And the court went on and went on and went on and went on. And then I remember the, the final day of the hearing in court, my husband stood up in the box and he said, my wife is a good wife. Mm. And I put my wife through a lot. <laughs> he also testified to the court that the police, the head of the police they were threatening him to speak against me to send me to prison what? so that's why he was prolonging the court going on and going on but he cannot speak against me as what the bible said so i was set free that is wow. good. They, they had charged me on the highest count mm -hmm. of destruction of police property it could have landed me in prison for a life what oh my yes. god wow and it still didn't end. Uh -huh. It still didn't end. After the both of us, we separated in the court. Because mm -hmm. I decided I was not going to go to counseling because I was not going to make back yeah. the marriage. Mm -hmm. And I decide I need out. Mm -hmm. Out. After I decide I need out for the relationship. He then will have me stood up, like you gonna call me and tell me, come for a maintenance for her, like come for a little allowance, and he will have me stake out all day and never talk. Wow. So I decide now to put him into the family court to get maintenance mm -hmm. for my daughter. Because mm -hmm. she was still young, went to school. Mm -hmm. When I went to the family court, the family court is you two hundred dollars per month. Mm -hmm. Which we all know two hundred dollars per month yeah. cannot yeah. take care of a daughter. Mm -hmm. Right, but anyway, I accept the two hundred dollars because he said that's what he can pay. Is okay. Then as the months roll by, going to get the allowance, no allowance is made, mm -hmm. so he's not paying him. Mm -hmm. So the money keep bulking up, bulking up. Mm -hmm. After it keep bulking up now, one day I went to the print to um the courthouse and I. I could be good, but I could snap in a second. So I start angry. It is not right. You know, it's... And I'm not leaving here until I get a letter to take to the head of the police. So I could get my allowance for mm -hmm. my daughter. Because it is not right. Mm -hmm. So they now start deducting the salary from oh, okay. me. One okay. time and mm -hmm. So you know for a fact now that I'm receiving mm -hmm. it. My daughter then passed. Common entrance and she went to the mirror for second. Oh, okay. Step. That's beautiful. That's when it gets more harder. 
Then my daughter passed and she goes to college. Okay. I'm going to college now. I noticed I would have gone now to get a little allowance. And I was told that her daddy took her off. Okay, because of her own I shit? called him. So I, okay. Yes. So I called him and so said, what kind of heart you could have as a father that your daughter still going to school mm -hmm. and you took her off? Right? So I said, God is going to make her way for me somehow because I know I'm struggling. Mm -hmm. I know how it is hard with me. Mm -hmm. So I have to survive because I cannot go back to prostitution. I cannot go back to stealing. So I have to go forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I remember now we have a lady. Her name is Cinder. She works at KFC. She's one of the managers at KFC. So I said to her, I say, I wanted to help help me to give my daughter a little job on weekends. It could help her to send her school. And she said, why well, didn't I ask before we don't apply and don't do interview, whatever. We have something next week. You should have asked before. But she said, you know what? Send she stay. Mm -hmm. So we bypassed everything and she went straight into the workshop. Mm -hmm. And my daughter start working yeah. Friday evening. So she's going to college. Mm -hmm. She's working Friday evening. She's working Saturday evening. She's working wow. Sunday. And then Monday right through Thursday, she it's goes cool, to college. Yeah. She come right now. She's fighting wow. her way to go to yes, school. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Right. And today, I must thank God yes. for his mercies and his grace that she came out yes. of secondary school with all 10 wow. subjects. Wow. And then she went to college. She came out of college with all her yes. degrees. And now she's working in Sanders Resort Hotel. Amen. That's so, it. So, through all the bad yes. comments. Yes, 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 yes. That's very good. Mm -hmm. I remember it's like, like everything was falling down. Everything yeah. was falling down. And mm -hmm. I can't pay my rent. I can't take care of the children how I want. It's like, I'm being hurt so much, abused, mm -hmm. public relationship, family is like, I was lost in my mind. And my big son was not living with me. So I called him and I told him, I want to see you come over. And he came and I put three of them to sit down. And I remember saying to my three kids, I cannot make it anymore. Oh God. I cannot make it anymore. I said, I'm going to kill myself. And I want the both of you to take care of my son, which is the little one, Dan Roy. I said, the pain that I'm going through, it's too much for me. I cannot live anymore. Right? That's what I do to my two big kids. He was small, so he really don't understand much. And my son said to me, Mommy... When you kill yourself, what's gonna happen yes. to us? Yes, yes. What's gonna yes. happen to us? Yes. So I said, "You sure you will take care of each other in the end?" He said, "Mommy, remember, you don't have. We don't have anybody but you. Mm -hmm. What? What we gonna tell our children later on when you are gone?" Mm -hmm. I remember my daughter said to me, "Mommy, I just asked you, please, to hang in for me." Hang in there for me. Mm -hmm. Just see that I go to school, I get my subject, I get a good job where I will be financially stable so I can help you. Mm -hmm. Mommy, there is nobody who's gonna love me and care for me like you. Oh my goodness. And that's why. So I said, I understand what you're so saying, but I just cannot make it anymore. Oh I was going through so much. Yes. It's like nobody to talk to. Nobody to trust. Yeah. Nobody to tell me, me clean, everything is going to be all yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So it's like, if for instance, you walk past me and you might want to say, oh, you look beautiful. You look pretty. Mm -hmm. I will be so defensive because I figured out that mm -hmm. you are coming to say something to her. Oh, yeah. my goodness. So everybody will look at the cussy side. Mm -hmm. Being ignorant when I was young, but, but it's not, I wasn't ignorant. I was just defensive. Yes, yes. Yeah. Because of the abuse that I went through. Yeah. Wow. And I remember my, even if my kids asked me to hold on, mm -hmm. 
I still, I didn't have any faith. I just believed the whole wall was crumbling. Yeah. And I took a knife. Huh? And I start cutting my hands. Okay. And today I, I live to see this car still remains. Yeah. So, so often I will look at it and I will say, Lord, you didn't ready for me yet. You know, I went through so much. Mm. I went through so much. Wow. I went through so, so much, much pain and hurt. My goodness. Wow. wow. And my life still didn't end there. My life still didn't get any easier. It's like worse. It's like everywhere I turn is worse. Just worse. Just worse. Then I got in with my um I got in with my son's father, my last son's father. And this guy came into my life. We were just friends. And then I'm telling you, you know, like, we were just friends. And I went and I had sex with him. And that was it. I was not in a relationship with him. It's like I was single. We were friends. We went out. We had a good time. I came home. You know? And I just let yeah. go. I just let go yeah. myself. Yeah. And a few months down the road, I was, few months down the road, I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. I was pregnant. Yeah, yeah. And when I found that I was pregnant, I was like, how I get this do? I said, I don't have sex. I'm not in a relationship. It's like, how I get this do? Yeah. And it's like, I was pregnant. Just like that, I was pregnant. One time. And I said, you know what? I contacted my husband. Okay. And I said to him, I said, well, we're not together. We are separated in the court, but we're not divorced yet. But I just want you to know that. I had sex with someone and I'm pregnant. Mm -hmm. He said, it's okay. He said, Mickey, it's okay. Because you didn't cheat on mm -hmm. me. We were not together. It's okay. And that's how I bring my yeah. son. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm telling you, if I knew what I was going to face with that gentleman for the 12 years of my son's life, yes. I'm telling you, I would have bought that oh, baby. God. Oh, my God. You. No. I would have bought that baby. Oh, God. I was pregnant. He beat me all over town. Oh. He beat me all over town. Oh. Just because I didn't want to have a relationship with him. Oh, anymore. my goodness. I was sick in the hospital, pregnant with his son. And one time I remember giving him my bank card. That's when things was good. Yeah. Yes. And I sent him to get some finance so he can get passage to come to the hospital and bring fruits oh. and stuff for me. So I trusted him. I trusted Wrong him. Wrong move. And he will bring the paper from the bank. So I trusted him. Wrong move. Until one day. When I go to that bank, all I hear insufficient. I said, that can't be true. Wow. I said, that can't be true. It can't be true because that was a dream to come for me and my yeah. son. It can't be true. When I went to the bank and looked back at the cameras, <laughs> my child father steal all oh my money. Oh my goodness. Wow. All my money. Wow. Wow. All my money. Wow. He used to abuse me so much till I was afraid to live. I was afraid. Where the police? Where are the police? So I end up still when my son was born. Uh -huh. I end up still have to have sex with him because I'm scared. What? I had to end up have sex with him because I was scared. Because he was so abusive to me that I had to just do as he Could said. you have gone to the police? So even if I know I am strong, at that point in my life, I became weak. Because I was so scared. You ever so scared of someone? I was so scared. Because when he beat mm -hmm. me, he only tried to disfigure my face. Oh. Like in my head, my oh. face, my beauty. Oh. That's all. He will beat me in my face, what? in my head. He tried to disfigure my face, what? my beauty. What? But still, God saved With weapons? Mecca, what did he... And I remember... When my son was a baby, I was not feeling well. I feel sick again. Sick. Vomited everything coming up off my chest. I wasn't feeling well. And I said, you know what? Let me go and do a pregnancy test and see. 
when I did the test, I saw one line false. Oh. But when I double check, I saw two oh. lines. I said, Lord, again. I said, God, no. I said, oh, no, goodness. I said, God, no. Wow. And I journey to the doctor. And the doctor told me I was pregnant. So I said, Doc, I don't want this baby. I said, my baby, not even I don't want this baby. I said, I don't care. Take it out now. I do not want this baby. I do not want this baby. He said to me, he's going to send me to do an ultrasound. So if based on what the ultrasound says, he's giving me some pills I have to buy. And trust me, these pills is almost $500. Okay. Wow. Wow. This pills is almost 500 And all my plan was to get this x-ray, this ultrasound, because I wanted to see what's there. I didn't hesitate. And that's 10 years ago. No, my son is 12. So that's 11, 12 okay. years. You have to okay. say no. And I went and I bought the pills and I did exactly what the doctor said. Mm -hmm. The night when I did it, some blood rushed down. After the blood rushed down, I see no other blood. And then by the day now, my belly start rising. My belly start rising big. But I'm not seeing any blood. And I start feeling a lot of pain and a lot of cramp. That feelings ache you and stuff. And I was seeing about a customer. I see about everybody else. And then in the later, I tell the customer because I trusted her. I said, me and feel good on her. Mm -hmm. I say, and I see my belly rising, rising. I say, I take some pills because I'm pregnant and I don't know what is happening. Mm -hmm. And from the time I said that to her, I try to walk to the bathroom, I fall down. Oh. I fall down. I then go to the doctor's office. Mm -hmm. And when I went, he tried to put in an IV. And the IV pulled back out. And the blood start oh. spouting. So the jet now rejecting the body. Mm. <laughs> and he said, well, Miss Brayton, it is nothing to be shamed about. You as a big woman. But we have to send you to the hospital. Yes. Have to say. But I was a bit embarrassed. But we have to send it to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And I went to the hospital and I had emergency surgery. I almost died. Oh. I had an emergency surgery because they had to clean out the rest part of the baby that oh. was there. And they had to clean me and scrape me and oh. stuff. And I spent some days in the hospital and I came out and I am here still today. Thank God. God is good. I am not ashamed God is good. of when to abort that child because in America, Canada, abortion mm -hmm. is free. Yeah. It's legal there. Yeah. So I'm not ashamed yeah. because for what I was going through, yes. I could not bring a next baby mm -hmm. for this monster. That, and that is not. your truth. It's your truth. Mm -hmm. It's your life. I could not. It's your life and you know what's best for you. Yes. Right in your life, and no one can judge you because you have to be in. We have to be in your shoe to know, to know what, what you're, you're going through. Yes, right? yes, you yes. Judge you for what yes. you have done in the past. There's no way. No one should have judged you, and no one should judge you either. Right. The only thing that yes. I could say, I'm not an expertise. You know. That counseling would be great for you and your children. And I love how yes, your definitely, children, definitely, definitely. I love how your children reach out to you. Your children are yes. supportive of you because when you, that part when you said you wanted to commit suicide, that really touches me because at that time you, you were having a mental issues. I'm not a doctor, but that's a mental state right there because you just give up. You give up hope. Yeah. Oh. And one one of the things that one of the things that hurt me the most mm -hmm. I know I know I am built strong. I know I am strong. Oh my god. But you know sometimes you just be yeah. yes. Uh, because it's like problems after problems after yeah. problems. And one of the one of the things that hurt me the most mm -hmm. is that I'm tell I'm not perfect. We are very straightforward we are and I'm a loving I'm a loving person I'm a giving person despite of what I'm going mm -hmm. through 
I still will try to reach out to help someone, to bless someone in whatever way, don't mind how small it is. But one of the problems I would have faced with over the years and still face with is that I am the victim. Mm -hmm. I am the victim. I, but so often, yes. persons will hurt me. Mercury, Mercury, I got 22 seconds. So if you want, I know you want us to continue or do you want us to come back on tomorrow night? What do you want? It's your choice. It's your choice. It's your choice. I'm cool. I could come back on.